Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you that you show us the way that we should be in the world where hearts are turned to you and our hearts to worship you. May our eyes be open to see your hand at work, our ears be open to hear your word, our hearts be open to receive and embrace your word. Come, Holy Spirit, touch our lives that we may draw closer to our Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. It is wonderful to see you in the house of the Lord today where we do truly worship our Lord and Savior, the risen King Jesus. And as always, he is glad that you are here today in his presence and with him. I'm sure that after hearing that gospel, you are looking and saying, okay, how is he going to tackle this one? (laughs) There is so much in that gospel message today that we'll get to it. Because there are some key things that these, the things that Jesus is talking about and that Jesus is telling us and reminding us of all those things that are evident in the outward side really come from something that's on the inward side. It comes from a relationship. These are just the reasons. They're not the reasons, but they are the effects of something that's of a greater cause within you. And I want us to take a look at that today. Because sometimes I think we can be very judgmental. We can change things. And this is what Jesus is also trying to say. is Nothing's changing. Nothing has changed from the very beginning. What God has established, he's carrying through. As in last week's gospel, we said not one iota, not one dot would be changed until everything is fulfilled, which is Jesus' salvation. I think we look to, the ba- to, ba- to things in the back way sometimes when we look to the past and they say, oh, it would be better and we make judgments of today. Now, I think there are a few people in here who are mature. Is that true? We are mature, aren't we? Yeah. Or we think we are, anyway. Yeah. I mean, we, we like things in the past. We want to go back to the past because we hold on to some things in the past, don't we? I mean, for those who are car enthusiasts, I remember the day when you could set your points and set your timing. Nowadays, you have to t- you laugh back there, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, we could do those things. There were things that we looked at, and when we look back to the past, let me just give you, you know, television is a prime example, and the movies is a prime example. You know, the early Lucy shows, Desi and Lucy had twin beds. Now, well, I'm not going to describe what they have. (laughs) You know, we have come a distance, but I don't think it was any different than what it was back then. It just wasn't as aware, and people weren't putting it into our face. We had a different set of values at that time. And we want to hold on to those. Because this is where Jesus is really pointing us to in this gospel is, You're not of the world because he says, I took you out of the world. But I think there's people that like to have one foot in the world and one foot out of the world. There was a movie, I'm I'm digressing a little bit, because we watched a movie last night called I'm I'm Not Ashamed. And there was one point in her life where she was what we might call a nominal Christian. She had one foot in the world and one foot out of the world. And... It bothered her because it, was, it affected her relationship with God. And she realized that. And the Holy Spirit moved upon her and touched her. And she said, I will not be ashamed of proclaiming the name of Jesus. No matter what it costs me, I will do that. I will. And from that time on, her life changed. It changed tremendously. She was not afraid to proclaim Jesus. She was not afraid to share his love. She was not afraid to share his compassion. It was a marvelous transformation in her life while she loved God and while she cherished him and trusted him. But there was an emptiness in her life because her relationship was not right with God. And that's what happens with us when our relationships are askew with God. 
then we don't see his presence as fully. We feel that distance rather than feeling him in our heart. Today, we want to look at a couple things that really Jesus is telling us. And Paul has told us that he comes to them because they're not ready. They're still in the flesh. They're still holding on to things that they judge and they think. And I follow Paul. I follow Apollos. But in the end of that passage, it says there's one purpose, and that's that we glorify God. It's not about me. It's about Him. And that's what we're looking at today. How do we get into that relationship? How do we draw closer to God? What are the things that are hindering it? And that's what Jesus is talking about in this gospel. These are the things that hinder our relationship with God. And it's God's desire that we have that relationship with Him. God desires us. But do we really desire Him? I don't think there's anybody in today's world that would say there's not a lot of unrest in the world. Isn't that true? We have Today we have a lot of political unrest where people are speaking out in anger and not just like the 60s peaceful sit-ins like we used to do. Well, I was a little bit... I wasn't old enough then, but... 70s, yes. But there was a lot of violence in the world today. There's a lot of protests and people lash out in anger, but this is not what God desires. And the reason is, is because the focus really with those is their focus is this is what I want this is what I desire this is how I feel and I must express it in the fullness of terms you see this is how we've fallen away from God and how we've fallen away from our relationship because where does it turn into it turns into self-centeredness selfishness instead of sharing the gospel instead of doing what God has called us to do and in reality it is a heart condition and that's what it boils down to it's a heart condition not a physical heart condition but a spiritual heart condition a heart condition in which we have taken our relationship and brought it in and when we do that we end up in selfishness self-righteousness anger and the ultimate part of that is anger turns into a hard-heartedness where we can't forgive a hardness where we end up having a grudge have you ever known anybody who's had a grudge mm-hmm. yeah and maybe sometime you've actually held a grudge initially but let God soften that heart and move it away from there because that's what he desires How can we show compassion to someone if we've got that hard-heartedness? How can we show compassion to the world if we're hardened against them? We can't. And this is really what Jesus is pointing to is where is your heart? What is the condition of your heart? Is it for God and for what He desires of us? Or is it for yourself and focus on our own self-desires, our own self-needs, our own selfishness, our own anger? When Jesus is talking about anger, we only think about one word, don't we? We know it. Come on. We know what we're talking about. But see, in the English language, there's only one nuance to the word anger. And it can carry a lot of power behind it anger can kill anger can destroy anger can divide it can divide relationships it can divide churches it can divide nations there's two types of anger in the Greek one is those that kind of flare up you know the kid throws cereal all over the floor kid comes home and the car's got a dent in it someone comes home and they've got a speeding ticket you know the kind of anger I'm talking about these are things that flare up but they're easily resolved 
that's one type of anger that the Greek talks about. And Paul reminds us in Ephesians, do not let the sun go down on your anger, but be reconciled. And why does he say that? Because if you allow that to seethe and to burn, it turns into a different type of anger. And that's an anger where grudges come and hatred comes and that hardness comes. Be reconciled, he says. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. That's what Jesus is pointing us to today. He's pointing us to say, be resolved of that anger. And we can let that anger come about because of what we feel and the way that we judge others. C.S. Lewis wrote this in The Case for Christianity. This year, or this month, or likely this very day, we have failed to practice ourselves the kind of behavior we expect others, people, to have. In other words, we set the standard, but what Jesus is saying is He sets the standard in the world. He sets the standards of our lives by pulling us out of the world. He said, I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. I think sometimes we feel that we can feel that anger and we want to hurt somebody. I read a story recently about a man who was falsely accused. He was in an alley area, he was on the street, and this police officer comes up and he arrests him. And he charges him with possession and distribution of a narcotic. The person who was arrested went to jail for four years. But the interesting thing is that the officer also went to jail for a year and a half. And why? Because he had falsified arrest records. He had falsified reports. And one of them that he falsified was this person whom he arrested who spent four years in jail. When they found out that those records had been falsified, the person was released. And in the article it said that his desire was to really go hurt this officer. Well, come to find out, both of them, after they had been released, were working in this Christian cafe. And the officer comes up and he says, I just want to say one thing. I am really sorry. You see, he came to his brother. He came to the person that would have something against him and asked for rec reconciliation. He reached out. I'm really sorry. And the person whom he offended, his heart was changed because of the forgiveness that this person was asking of him. His heart was changed and he no longer desired to hurt this person. In fact, they became very, very close friends. You see, that's the power of forgiveness. That's the power of taking that anger away and laying it at the foot of the cross and allowing Jesus to work it. Allow Jesus to cover it and allow Jesus to move in our hearts and allow the Holy Spirit to move on us. Because if we maintain that anger, how do we have a relationship with God? God could have been very angry with us, couldn't he? I love in the right one service, it says, Though we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, and yet God receives us because he sent his one and only Son to redeem us, to reconcile us from the sinful world and our sinful nature. It's about turning our hearts to Him and allowing the Holy Spirit to move. We also say in that prayer, 
sincerely present ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy and living sacrifice unto thee. But how can we do that if we have anger? How can we do that if we don't have forgiveness? How can we do that if we don't reconcile? And that's what Jesus is saying. How can you come to the altar if you're holding this or someone is holding against you? Because I forgave you. And you're reaching out. All of these things come from the heart. A spiritual heart condition. A heart that should be focused on God. It is when we have our own selfishness and our own desires and seeking our own gratification that we pull ourselves away from God rather than seeking Him and serving Him and reaching out to Him. Peter, in his epistle, reminds us that we should divert from our anger. Do not repay evil for evil, reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless. For, though, for this is the will you were called, that you may obtain blessings. Today, all of those things that Jesus was talking about, are the effects of a hardened heart are the effects of a selfish heart but imagine what it would be like if we set our selfishness aside if we set our anger aside and we reconcile with those the one thing he does say in there is that if that person who accuses you takes you to the judge, the judge will give you to the guard and you'll be thrown into prison and you won't be released until the last penny is paid. Now, I don't know of many people who can pay out of prison. But what he's saying is that you will be held captive by that. You'll be held captive by that until you reach out. Until you touch. I encourage you today. If there's anything in your heart that you need to leave with Jesus, will you do that today before you come? When we say the confession, will you leave it at the foot of the cross? And let God move within you and feel His presence and feel the joy that you have. Amen. Jesus' words to us today are words about relationships. They're words about reconciliation. They're words about forgiveness. But most of all, they're words about our heart. Our spiritual heart, not our physical heart. Our spiritual heart to reach God. Our spiritual heart to seek Him. Our spiritual heart to do His will on the world. To reach out to others in the compassion that He had for us. Anything else causes our hearts to wander. Let your heart be towards Jesus. Let your heart be one to serve Him. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render no man evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. God reconciled us to him because he is a great God. Our going forth song today is, How Great is Our God.